Remember, it's you, you alone, who gets to redefine and reimagine what your life's going to be and what it's going to look like. Hi, I'm Jo Clark, and thanks so much for joining me today. This is the Redefining Midlife podcast, a podcast designed for the 40 plus woman who is determined to challenge society's myths and beliefs around midlife. It's for the woman who is inspired and ready to define midlife her way. Join me each week as I chat to health and wellness experts for up-to-date information on how to live well, as well as some special conversations with incredible everyday women redefining what midlife can look like. Here's to making our next half of life even better than the first. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I hope that wherever you are listening in the world, that life is treating you well. Now, a couple of weeks ago, during the wrapping up of the special 100th episode celebration, my friend and guest, Tracy Harris, asked me to share three things that we can go and do to redefine ourselves and our lives today. Now, I had absolutely no idea what Tracy was going to ask me in that interview. So everything I said was off the cuff and came straight from the heart. And coming up with those three on the spot was actually pretty easy. The hardest part was actually to narrow it down to just three. Now, I'm sure these ideas are going to make a future episode, so stay tuned for those. Anyway, I said in that episode that for those three things, you should challenge your absolutes, prioritize your health and wellness, and choose your circle wisely. So I thought on today's episode, I'd give just a little more context and information about why I chose those three. Firstly, when it comes to challenging your absolutes, well, you might not have heard that term before. This really is all about challenging your assumptions, your old beliefs, your old stories. Maybe you've caught yourself saying, I can't, or I'll never, or I always, and then you finish the sentence. Maybe you've said things like, well, I'm not good at meditating, or there's no way I could ever do yoga, or perhaps I'm too old to start, or I'm hopeless at cooking, or I couldn't go a week without having a wine or a cocktail. Or perhaps they're even bigger and deeper than those assumptions and stories. Perhaps if one's like, I could never leave my job. I could never move to another town. I'll never get out of this mess. What are the things that you said that you can't do, that you've never been able to do, or you'll never do, or you always do? I actually ask you to challenge those. Ask yourself, is it true? Because sometimes the absolutes in your life come from the words of someone else who told you that you couldn't do or be something. And like so many things, these stories have been around since our childhood or even early adulthood. And when you tell yourself those same stories over and over, and often it's subconsciously, you don't even realize you're doing it, you start to believe them. And often you deeply believe them. The stories we tell ourselves, or our absolutes, they actually give us limits, but they also give us possibilities. Now, your stories can allow you to become the fullest version you can be, to risk, to learn, to become your best self. Or, on the other hand, if it's a negative story, then the opposite happens. You have a negative mindset, and you stay stuck because you're not even going to try or become something new or become someone different. Think about the absolutes you have in your life. Are they limiting you or are they keeping you from trying new things or from being a different person? Decide which ones could do with an update because midlife really is a perfect time to try and explore new and different things. Over the last few years, I've challenged lots of my absolutes. Some have been big and some have been small. Some of my big ones were leaving my career in education. I told myself I'd always be a teacher and I would stay in that job until I retired. I could have taken all of my leave entitlements and then gone back, but instead I chose to challenge that absolute, that belief. And challenge, it was my only option really that I decided. Another example was one when my husband and I decided to challenge the absolute we had about living in a certain place until we would be in our mid-60s. Now, that was a story we told ourselves, but we challenged it. Was that really true? Could we possibly move before that? 
Well, the answer was yes, and we moved when, when, we're, when we were in our 50s, early 50s, I should say. Now, that in itself has led to many absolutes being challenged and rewritten. Now, I won't sugarcoat it. It can be very uncomfortable to challenge your absolutes. It can take time, and it's definitely not always a smooth road. In fact, there are many bumps that you can come along the way. I often think that as parents, from a young age, we challenge our children's absolutes when they said that they can't do or be something, yet challenging our own absolutes, that's something that we struggle with or perhaps we don't even consider. So I encourage you all, begin taking note of your absolutes. Start listening to that little voice in your head and challenge those. If you need support, pardon me. <clears throat> Sorry, Linda, I've just got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> Three, two, one. If you need support, find it. That support might come from a trusted friend, a colleague, a partner, or it might come from a coach or a mentor. I've found using all of these to be super helpful. And now I also offer the same support and mentoring to other women. It's life-changing. Now, the second thing we can go and do to redefine ourselves and our lives today is to prioritize our health and wellness. And as I said in episode 100, Look at the end in mind. How do you want to live, feel, and be when you're in your 70s, 80s, and into your 90s? And with modern medicine, there's every chance that you're going to live into your 90s. Start now. Prioritize your health. For myself and the ladies that I mentor, we focus on six pillars of wellness. Nutrition, movement, stress management, sleep and rest, purpose and connection, and hormone support. And every health expert that I've had on the show speaks about these pillars in one way or another and the importance of being proactive in our midlife. So many changes are happening to us on a cellular level. We can't see what's going on and it's happening during this stage of life. So even if we don't experience some of those signs and symptoms of a chronic disease now, we may not notice or feel the effects until later in life. So doing something now really is important. We know that the majority of women for the last 10, 15 years of their life are frail, many are bedridden or housebound. They're often dying slowly, they're in pain, and they're requiring help from others. Don't let that be your story. Small changes now can make a massive difference over the years and decades ahead. And even if you've let your health and wellness slide because of the demands you've had in your life, you can actually begin by starting to make small changes today. So what's one small thing that you could add or change today that would make a difference to your health? You probably know, you could probably list, in fact, quite a few of them off the top of your head. But if you aren't sure, I really do encourage you to listen some, to some of the past episodes with the incredible world-leading experts that have been on the podcast. And the biggest piece of advice I have for you if you're going to make any changes, is to start small. Don't create your wellness plan based on your ideal week or a perfect week. An ideal week only works in an ideal life, which is a dream version of what life is. And as we all know only too well, real life happens. So create your week on the worst case scenario type of a day. The day when you can only achieve the bare minimum. That way, you can follow up and follow through even on your worst days. And if you've got a great day, terrific. Add more things in then. Create your own wellness plan for your own health needs. And that can build a strong foundation of wellness habits that suits you and your life. And if you need support doing this, then you are welcome to join my Better Than Before online monthly membership. Just send me a message or head to the link in my bio. Now, the third thing that I suggested that we can do for ourselves in midlife is to put yourself into a community or have a circle of friends who are grow going to grow with you. Surround yourself with people who have got a growth mindset, people who are proactive in living their best life, people that can have enriching, you can have en enriching conversations with, people who can lift your energy rather than lower it. And I'm sure you've all been with people who are energy vampires. You know what that feels like. It's also being mindful of who you follow on social media, who or what, or what you watch on the television screen, or who you listen to on the radio or perhaps on podcasts. 
Be really mindful of all of those things because they add up. There's a Harvard physician and his name is Nicholas Christikos. And I hope I've, I'm not quite sure if I've pronounced his surname right. Um, but anyway, Nicholas has researched the power of association. And he's found something through his research, which is incredibly interesting. And we're all influenced, not just by our friends, our circle of friends, but we're influenced by the friends of our friends and the friends of our friends' friends. It's just incredible, but it makes sense when you think about it. Now, in his research, he found that there are a couple of reasons why we're influenced to such a degree by those three layers of the people around us. So our friends, our friends' friends, and our friends' friends' friends. Firstly, it's mirror neurons, a type of brain cell which causes us to mimic the people we spend the most time with. And secondly, there's something called emotional contagion. It sounds like a horrible virus, but it's not. Well, it can be, I suppose, if you think about it this way. It's when we, over time, adopt dominant emotions of the people who are in our, inverted commas, social orbit. So if you've got positive people around you, you'll have more positive outcomes in your life. If you have negative people around you that bring you down and who don't enrich your life, then that's going to follow suit that your life is going to be like theirs. And so even social media, if you think about that as well, the people we follow, the people we have conversations with, the people in our work, our friends and our families, all of these associations are affecting our mindsets. They're affecting our emotions, our energy levels, our creativity and the way we live our lives. And as Tracy and I discussed in our conversation, what this research shows is that if we're hanging out with people and spending our days working or sitting in conversations with people who don't, say, for example, prioritize their health and our wellness, well, that drastically affects our own motivation and in turn, our own thoughts, our behaviors and our actions. We know human connection, fitting in and belonging is a basic human need. But just ask yourself, is or are you in a circle that you even want to be in? Because the quality of our circle and the quality of our conversations really does impact. Remember, it's you, you alone, who gets to redefine and reimagine what your life's going to be and what it's going to look like. It's you who gets to edit, who gets to change things or to add things. It's you alone who gets to think about your thinking. You're the one stuck in your head. You're the one who can keep on learning and you're the one who gets to keep growing. You actually get the chance to adapt and change if you want, or you can stay stuck in that same loop doing the same things for the next 10, 20, 30 years. So think about who's in your inner circle. Can you trust those people who are in there? Do you lift each other up and not only be there for the good times, but also for the bad times? And what influences do you allow into your world? Even if it's a TV that you watch, the podcast that you listen to, the books that you read, or the conversations that you have. As Tracy said in our interview, permission to edit or grow your circle, especially your inner circle. Now, I'm so very grateful that you've listened to this podcast and to this episode today. I hope the episode's given you something to think about and something you can take action on. Just hearing it explained a little bit more might give you a bit more insight. Now, these are the sorts of things that I help coach and mentor women with so that they can create faster changes in their lives and have support along the way. If you need support or you want to implement some of these changes in your life, but you aren't sure how or where to start, I really do encourage you. You can book a free 20 minute connection call with me. Just send me a message or head to that link in the show notes and book a time. It's as simple as that. Before we wrap up, let's go through those three things that can help to redefine and create an amazing second half of life. Firstly, I encourage you to challenge your absolutes. Secondly, prioritize your health and your wellness. Thirdly, choose your inner circle and social connections wisely. Now, I hope this episode has helped to inspire you or helped you to become more aware of these three things that can have such a profound impact on how well we live. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so feel, feel free to send me a message. There are so many amazing episodes that are coming up now with incredible women. I have recorded a number of them, and they're amazing. Make sure you subscribe or follow the show so you don't miss an episode. 
And until next week, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for listening and sharing your time with me today. I'd love you to hit subscribe on Apple Podcast or your favorite podcast app to keep spreading these empowering messages. Please share this podcast with other incredible midlife women in your world. Join me again next week for another redefining midlife conversation. Thanks again for tuning in.